let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death and trusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. from the book of Exodus. In those days, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, they shall take every man a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then a man and his neighbor next to his house shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs in the evening. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat them. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. In this manner, you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you upon the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall fall upon you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as an ordinance forever. The word of the Lord.
participation in the blood of Christ. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. How can I repair the Lord for His goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servants are mine, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bond. At Thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the name of the Lord, my vows to the Lord I will feel full. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
the word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garment and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not know now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bitter does not need to wash, except for his feet, but he is clean all over. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, You are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garment and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. 
the gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers, dear sisters, I welcome you once again to this wonderful celebration in commemoration of Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. Last Sunday, we celebrated the Palm Sunday. Yesterday, during the Christmas, we celebrated the unity of priests with their bishop. We also consecrated the oil of the sick, oil of catechumen, and oil of chrism, which we shall use throughout the year. The priests also renewed their vows, their priestly vows. They renewed them, and you promised to pray for them. You actually prayed for them that day, but you promised that you will keep praying for them for the grace of perseverance and faithfulness. Today we gather to appreciate the gift of the Eucharist which Jesus gave us. The Eucharist is the source and summit of all our Christian life. It is the wire or the life wire of our lives. Take away the Eucharist, our gathering here will just be a social gathering. It will be a picnic or a jamboree. The Catholic Church minus the Eucharist is an empty church. The Eucharist makes us to be Catholic and to be Christian. The Eucharist is the center of our lives. Today is referred to as Monday, Thursday, and the word Monday comes from the Latin mandatum, or commandment a mandate. This is reflecting Jesus' words in John chapter 13, verse 34, when he said, a new commandment I give you, a new commandment I give you, mandatum, commandment, a new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved you. That is the essence of the Christian life, to live like Jesus did. And so during this celebration, we are reminding ourselves of that great moment Jesus had when he entrusted his body to them, take and eat, take and drink. This is my body and this is my blood. On that day also he instituted the gift of the priesthood because he commanded them to go and do this, celebrate this always in memory of me. So on that last supper, Jesus did so many things that we can never forget as Christians. He gave us his body and his blood as a nourishment for our souls. 
he instituted the sacrament of the priesthood. And that is why we, the priests, are here. It's not everybody that is a priest. He chose some people, a few, and asked them to continue with this tradition. We call them priests. And on this day, we celebrate the gift of the priesthood. Jesus also taught us how we must love one another, not only in theory, but in concrete gestures. We are told he knelt <clears throat> in front of his disciples and washed their feet. So you can see the <clears throat> triple things we are celebrating, that Jesus gave us the Eucharist, he gave us the priesthood, and he gave us the love that we should share among ourselves. Today, in the first reading from Exodus, we read of the deliverance of the people of Israel from Egypt, how they were enslaved by Pharaoh. God commanded them to kill a lamb on that night of Passover and to smear the door post with the blood of the lamb. And this instruction was obeyed. It was a prefiguration of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus giving his body as bread, as food to eat, and his blood as our own drink, drink for eternal life. Jesus is the Paschal Lamb. When the Egypt, when the Israelites were celebrating the Passover, they had to bring a lamb to slaughter, physical lamb. Now we don't need any lamb. Imagine if all of us were to bring a lamb here each. The whole church will be full of lambs. And in any case, I am not sure if everybody would afford a lamb because the price of lamb has gone so high. Before you could get a lamb for 5,000 naira, 10,000 naira. Now I'm told you need even 50,000, even up to 100,000 for a lamb. So we don't need the lamb anymore. Jesus is the lamb. And that is why we call him the lamb of God. In the second reading, St. Paul identifies that the supper of the Lord was something unique, something that he had received. It was handed from the Lord, which goes to show that as early as the time of St. Paul, when the church was still very young, the Eucharist was being celebrated, just like we are celebrating now. Christ's body and blood remain that food which he gives us to nourish our souls as we journey towards heaven. We are all traveling to heaven. That is our destination. The more often you take this food, the more you will be strong and the more you will reach your destination well. So we encourage people to attend Holy Mass, not only on Sundays, even on weekdays. Wherever Mass is being celebrated and you have the opportunity, attend that Mass. You will earn something. You will get something. So today, our thoughts and attention will all be focused on the Eucharist. And I'm so happy we already know the significance of the Eucharist. The altar is there. The priest offers the Eucharist. The priest goes round with the incense, giving honor to the Eucharist. When you come forward to receive the body of Christ, the priest says the body of Christ and you say amen. Before now, we were receiving the Eucharist on the tongue. It's simply as a sign of reverence. Because Christ is so holy, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my hand, so we receive it with the tongue. But because of various factors, medical and so on, COVID-19, Ebola, and what have you, 
we said people could receive the Eucharist in the hand. But if you ask me what is the most honorable, what is the most respectable way of receiving the Eucharist, it is on the tongue. But that does not mean if you receive the body of Christ on your hand, it doesn't mean it becomes less the body of Christ. There are some of us who go to the extreme to say that if you receive the Holy Communion on the hand, it is not correct and it is not right. That is extremism. The best way to receive the Holy Communion is on the tongue. But you can also receive Jesus on your hand. Let nobody condemn the person who receives on the hand or the person who receives on the tongue. So today, my dear brothers, let's not look anywhere and you know, scatter our thoughts. Let us just focus on the Eucharist that Jesus has instituted for us. Let us receive it as the food of the family, the family of God. The Eucharist has a communitarian nature. You don't eat the Eucharist alone. We come together from different ethnic backgrounds, different social backgrounds, to eat the Eucharist. You can't say you eat it alone. So it means unity. It means love. And it means that when we receive the Eucharist, which is Jesus Christ, we should go out and live it out. It is not, it is not right that you receive the Eucharist and then you go out and you start behaving in a conduct that doesn't resemble that of a Christian. I have seen people after mass fighting in front of the gate because of one problem or the other. I have seen somebody after the mass, he was driving in his car and somebody just mistakenly brushed his car and come and see the fire that was coming out of his mouth, the insults that were coming out of his mouth. This is somebody that just received Jesus in the Eucharist. And the brother was begging, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean it, sorry, he was on fire. Where is the Eucharist? Where is the impact of the Eucharist in this person's life? And I have seen some people too, they were coming in to the church for mass. And I think something, some disagreement happened between them. They were arguing and it was a very hot argument and they were almost going to blow themselves. Then the other one said, you are lucky we are going in for mass. If not for this mass, you would have seen what I would do to you. Wait till after the mass, then I will show you Pepe. Now, what is the relevance of the Eucharist? You come and receive the Eucharist as if you are receiving biscuit, as if you are receiving bread, ordinary bread and you go out and you continue your fighting, you continue your gossiping, you continue your stealing, you continue all the evil things you are doing, then that Eucharist means very little to you. So let us leave out the Eucharist. When the priest says, go in peace, the mass is ended, he's asking you to go and leave out what you have learned in the celebration of the Holy Mass. So my dear brothers and sisters, what we come to receive is not just ordinary biscuit. If you have not been receiving the Eucharist, ask yourself why. There must be a reason. Work on that and be able to come and receive the body of Christ with us. When Christ said take, he didn't say it's only for you and you. He said take all of you and eat. So let us prepare ourselves to come and receive Jesus. And it's not only receiving Jesus, but it's also venerating him. That is why we Catholics, when we come in, if the Blessed Sacrament is in the tabernacle, we genuflect. Even if you are passing outside, as you pass the church door, you make the sign of the cross, a sign that you know there is somebody holy, somebody here who is Jesus. So let us show him honor. There is a Eucharistic chapel there. I always see people lying on the ground, some kneeling and praying fervently.
We are also advised to practice Eucharistic adoration. It's not enough to receive Jesus in the Eucharist during Mass. Also, outside of the Mass, there is Eucharistic adoration, there is benediction, and all this, we must come and adore Jesus. But above all, Jesus is asking us to be concrete in our Christian life. Today he says, after washing the feet of his disciples, he said, go and do likewise, love one another. So he is inviting us to wash the feet of one another. Whether you are from the east or north or south or west, we are brothers and sisters. If you are working in the Ministry of FCT or Ministry of Health or Ministry of Education, learn to serve. There are many people working in these ministries. Some are Christians, some are Muslims. When you meet them there, they are different from the people you meet in the church. They are different from those you meet in the mosque. In the mosque, we are all pious, bowing and standing. In the church, we are all very sanctimonious. But when we go to the ministry, meet them there, they are like fire, they are like lions. They will eat you up. The same people who receive the body of Christ will tell you your file is missing. And you will look for your file, oh, you never get it. Until you give them something, then the file will appear. Somebody who has worked all his life, his pension is pending. They will hide the file. And who are those doing that? They are Christians, they are Muslims. You are looking for land, the same thing. They will give you this land and go and duplicate the papers and give it to another person. And if you ask their name, they are either Abdullahi, Abdullahi or Timothy, Christian or Muslim. So let us make sure we don't joke with our religion. So I ask God to bless each and every one of you all of us gathered here for this worship, that we shall carry the spirit of our worship with us wherever we go, at home, in the place of work, wherever you find yourself, be a Christian, so that as you are going, people can point at you, at you and say, there goes a Christian. There goes a Christian. Let us be Christians in word and in deed. And may God help us to be so through Christ our Lord. Disciples for the washing of feet. Dr. George Yekungu. This is Josephine Opara. Bernard M. Echeta. This is Justin Onwe. This is Neka Ikemwako. Isaac Bian. Onyedika Chukuka. Yaku Buguba, Mr. Matthew Ade, Mrs. Rosemary Cotton, Mr. Malaki Ngoka, please come out for the washing of feet. Please, those calls should come out quick. Dr. George Aban Ekung, Mrs. Josephine Opara, Bernard M. Echeta, Neka Ikemwako, Isaac Bian, Onyedika Chukuka, Mr. Matthew Ade, 
Yakubu Buba, Mala Kingoka. Professor Kao Kechubu. Okao Kechubu. Okao Kechubu.
at the Last Supper, our Lord Jesus Christ instructed us to love and to serve one another. Let us pray to him to give us the spirit of humility and the grace to love one another just as he loves us. the ordained ministers of the church that in their ministry they may follow the footsteps of Christ who gave himself up in selfless service to his disciples and the entire humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. For civil leaders that, inspired by the humility of Christ, who washed the feet of his disciples, they may realize that they are called to serve the people, especially the poor and the less privileged in the society. Let us pray to the Lord. vocations to the priestly and religious life, that more young persons all over the world may hear the call of Christ and follow him in the priesthood and religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. community, that we may truly love one another and recognize in the Eucharist the living presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, who loves us and accompanies us in our daily life. Let us pray to the Lord. intentions, the sick, church projects, or other activities. Let us pray to the Lord. For 
for the dead, especially those of our parish community and our family members, that they may find eternal rest with the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. silence for our private intentions. Let us pray to our Mother Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed, blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our loving Father, in this evening celebration, your Son left us the Eucharist as a memorial of himself and taught us the demands of charity. Help us to be charitable to one another and grant that our prayers may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord.
My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Also, oh Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Anselm, our glory bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. And all gathered here, whose feet remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or the offer it for themselves and all who are dead to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your sons. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be born by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who do sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into your company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it.
Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament all praise and all thanks to you in every moment. O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanks to you in every moment. O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanks to you our Lady Queen of Nigeria, Prince Brother.
and Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Seated a while. Our ladies' family, there shall be no final blessing because of the nature of this Mass. So His grace will move forward now and incense the Blessed Sacrament, and we shall all move to the altar of repose. As He moves, we change our focus, our direction towards the altar of adoration. Thank you.
for the next one hour, we shall adore the Lord together. And after one hour, the catechist will announce to us the order of adoration by groups.